Good morning, everybody. It is day two out here in the Pacific Northwest. We got Brookie getting geared up. Good morning. And we got the whole Addicted crew. We got Jordan back there, cameraman Sean, and the man himself, Mr. Marlin. What's up, guys? Get so. my toe warmers on here. You gotta teach these people from Florida, you gotta be warm out here in the Pacific Northwest. We're good to go. You ready Jeez. today, bud? So today we are on these things. We're on the rafts. Yesterday we were on the jet boat. Got a fresh layer of ice on here for this morning. Comes with snow. <sighs> yeah, I'd say it's a little cold, but this is what the adventure is all about. You're looking good in your new waders there, babe. Thank you so much. Ricky and I got some brand new waders for this trip, some high seas. I'll show you guys what they're all about on the river a little bit later. Got some new beanies from the Addicted crew. So we got two boats today. We got a raft and then a sled. And check this out. They got this little railroad system built for it. Launch you right down to the river right there. Did it. Did it. Take this in. Take in this beauty. We don't get to do this. You know, being from South Florida, you don't see anything like this. It's luscious and green and the terrain and elevation. There's just something special about elevation. Like I always say, it makes you feel so small. Just the beauty of nature. Pacific Northwest is known for having huge trees and this does not disappoint. This is right in the backyard of uh, Big Dave's Fishing Lodge. And the weather's actually holding out for us. The weatherman said it was supposed to be raining and snowing right now. We don't have either of that. And just like that, we got rain. Welcome to the Pacific Northwest right here. 30 minutes ago, beautiful and sunny. You guys are so used to it by now though. Uh, yeah, but this time of year it's supposed to be nice. We should be in t-shirts, but we're, uh, it's, there's some snow on the ground. It is now hailing, being nice and sunny, to rain, to hail, and now it's almost looking like it may start snowing. <laughs> I'm kind of low over here to the left. So what you want to do is just keep the angle on the fish. You okay. never, you know, you don't want to try to ever have that line pulling directly out of his mouth. Yeah, baby. Nice. First steelhead, yeah. let's go. Oh, he got you and then he came back and got you again. <laughs> and look at the snowstorm and the sleet <laughs> stopped. Oh, it's a nice one too, bright one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Yeah, but do it fast. Right now. Go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. We're done. It's in. I got him. Yeah. 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 Nice, buddy. First steelhead. Nice Dude, he ate it. And he missed it. And he back. reeled. And I'm like, stop, stop. And he stopped it. And it came back and just plowed it. Dude. Brooke was just asking, do they eat it on the reel in? <laughs> I'm like, ah, sometimes they do. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Thank, Thank you, go, Dave. Way to go, there brother. Go. All right, guys, check it out. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. And you know what makes it that much better? Having all these guys put us on these fish in this just absolutely beautiful location. I mean, I couldn't ask for a more beautiful scenic place to catch my first steelhead. So these are rainbow trout that have went into the ocean and have come back into the river, correct? More or less. It's really cool to see that they, even though they're not salmon, they have a very similar morphology, what their mouths do. Their teeth are real similar, the colorings on them, just super pretty fish. And you guys can see those signature spots right there, just like a rainbow trout has. You're gonna see some that are just like platinum. Yeah, like that one's been in here just, you know, a little bit, not very long though. I never really realized that trout, I mean, I guess they're just like any other fish, they gotta catch prey. They got a gnarly little set of teeth on there. You know, a lot of times when you start to steal that fish and they'll say, don't even plan on catching one your first year because it, it they're smart they're very aggressive fish but they're super smart so your presentation everything's got to be right or they won't bite it so we're just floating down this river and these guys know exactly where the fish are going to sit just based on the way the water's moving and eddies and how deep it is and so we're constantly adjusting the height of that bobber and how far down that line will go and it's really neat because, I mean, me, never having been here, would never know where a fish is, but these guys have it down there, like, cast here, cast there, let your line do this, let your line do that. 
Get him, 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 Okay, now you look at you're gonna stick your tip in the water right here. Okay. Right yeah, now. now just go easy and kind of real. Just keep okay. real. He's gonna come right to you. Steelhead number two, baby. That same spot. Just, just keep it smooth and just keep reeling like that. Just real. Really slick. Yeah, just kind of keep your rod right here and reel. Okay. Now. Now reel down. Reel down. Right here with this. Okay, now wait. Okay, you go right now. Try to get it right now. Lift, lift, lift. Okay. Nope, not happening. Here. No, come here. You stay on this side. It's it even tight line. It's, it's tough to get him in with such a long leader. Dave, if it's a wild, let's cradle it. We don't know. Come here. Okay. Go. You got the cradle. Come here. Now. Ready? Come here. Yeah. I can't yeah, like, tell you. No, that's a it is. It looks like a Okay, this way with your eyes. Kind of lift up, up here. Stay real high. There you go. Now reel down. Now reel down. You know, you're kind of letting them come this way. Okay, now we start. Perfect. We got him. We got him. We got him. These guys are yelling hatchery, wild fish. I don't know how they can tell from so far away, but it's pretty cool. Gorgeous fish right there, guys. Gorgeous. Beautiful steelhead number two. So you said this is a, a hatchery This is a hatchery fish. fish. As you can see, it's missing the adipose fin here. It's got the dis the, the the deformed like dorsal fin that's from being in a you know where they raise them in their tanks and stuff and this fish spawned already and is headed back out to the ocean to to kind of go do its thing again and gorgeous it, believe it or not they'll go back out to the ocean and then return again that's what's so cool about these fish and really yeah yeah so yeah beautiful fish though this nice. one's this one's got a lot more color than the first one we caught looks a lot more like a rainbow mm -hmm. gorgeous fish look at that I love it when they open their mouth like that. So sick. Let's release this. Oh, she's ready. Right through the peak, on the way she goes. Very nice. We gotta get on again, on, on again. We got Dave getting us anchored up on the shore so that way we can land this fish. Keep it down, kind of head in the water. There you go. Nice little wild fish, dude. See, it's got the adipose oh, fin here. Yeah. She looks like she's already spawned out. How she's got the purple fin. Eh, she might still have eggs, but she's getting there. So you got to uh, keep the wild ones in the water, right? Well, we just like to take care of them, keep them yeah. in the water, and as healthy as you can, you know, because these are our ones that are going to produce our, our next run of fish. So right back into the current. Good job, buddy. Thank you. That was awesome. See yeah. how you reel down like that bobber goes? You yeah. reel, get tight to him, then come up. It's just that motion of doing that, yep. and it'll be. You got so much slack in your line because the way we're fishing, we, and you got this huge leader, right? And you got your bobber. So not only do you got to get all that slack between the bobber and that hook out, but you also have the slack between your rod tip and the bobber. And you know, you might have 20 feet that you really got to crank as fast as possible. You're fishing that little tiny hook, they got soft mouths, and uh, there's definitely science to it and, and an art to getting that perfect presentation you, would you say that these fish are like sitting in certain spots of the river absolutely i mean we're something? i mean we're pretty much you know we know the river so we fish it every day so you kind of have an idea of where they're sitting and they're going to be in for for every height whether it's hot you know when it's big and high they'll be sitting way back on the edges in the soft stuff when it's real low like this or medium height like this they'll be kind of in where there's still some oxygen, you know, but they're, they're sitting right down on the bottom in those trenches and just kind of just milling around down in there. And it's weird, there'll be 15, 20 of them in a hole in some spots, or there'll be one, you know, it's yeah. kind of just a, just a mix, but that was a great job, man. Fish on. <laughs> it's my first steelhead, so, you know. She's already came up, done her thing, see how skinny she is there? She's already dug her, dug her nest and yeah, pretty. See ya. Nice job, dude. We've gone from sunshine to rain to sunshine to hail to sunshine to snow <laughs> to hail. <laughs> it's a very diverse weather day. If you guys want to see it all, come to Oregon. <laughs> come to Tillamook, Oregon. It's just little pellets of hail, but it was snowing just a little bit ago. I'll take hail over rain. At least hail beads off. It just pops off your rain jacket just like that. You see that? Look at those little hail balls. 
fish. <laughs> there it is. Now he's gonna show you. Get excited. Get excited. Nice. My favorite part right here, leader, and I'm seeing them all come up and boil and roll. Pretty. Oh god, it's gone. Nice job, dude. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. I've Big never I seen. I don't even know whether to consider this hail or snow or what. Frozen water. Yeah, we got it's we got little funky. icebergs. Look at all that. That's all the hail floating on top of the water. Look at the boat. There's pellets everywhere. River ice. Every single time we get bad weather, it lasts like five, ten minutes. And, oh, here we go. Oh, it's 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 it doesn't feel good when it hits you, does it? That one hits your face. He no. said it doesn't last very long. Forrest Gump, Gary and Schneeze. out there. Oh my god, that's a fish. Keep reeling, keep reeling really running quick. Quick, get over the top of them and reel. Hold to the right. Real fast. There we go. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him. Old Poppy showed up to the party here. Uh, Poppy. Oh, Poppy. Ooh, this might be a good one, huh? He's doing some stuff. He's doing some stuff. Put it between your... No hands, bro. No hands. Healing <laughs> again. You got a little snow, a little hill mixture. Whenever you want, I'm ready. Oh, Jesus. That one bounced off the net too. Hey, that one bounced off the net too. It came off and I felt it just go, think, just, uh, just kind of round it. <laughs> Steady even. Little. Yeah, because you're going to kind of push your rod up forever. I had one. You did? Yeah. This feels like the biggest fish of the day for sure. Little quiet. How did quiet. Even get in here? <laughs> this feels good, guys. The bite is turning on. We've been having these like snow and rain and hail flurries, but as soon as you get some nice weather, they start to bite. Real, real. Keep your tip low. You know, you don't go limp. You're going to lift way up and over. So you push your rod up river in the water. You got to get them above us. So now up and over fast. Real hard. Real hard. Oh, yeah. Woo! Nice one! Good job, Vic. Thank you, babe. That's a big one. You got hit too on that drift? Yeah, I did. Little, come here. Come on. Get out. Go. That's a, that's a stud. Yeah, look at that. What do you think? That that's fish is probably like 12, 13 yeah, 12, pounds. 12, 13 pounds, and it's she's Gorgeous. a little skinny. I think she spawned out too, honestly. Um, probably downriver fish. This fish hasn't been in the ocean long either. It's just, it's getting towards the point where they're spawning. So, if you want to get a good shot with it. Time to let this beautiful wild steelhead go. Just take one last second. I appreciate all those colors in that fish. Thank you for a great fight, buddy. We're off. Ready? Ready. Just kind of let it up. There she goes. Just that. like that. I'll see her out there. <laughs> He's coming at you! He's coming at you! Woo! Oh, he's running up river! Chris, we'll be right back. Man, he slammed it. So this fish slammed this thing, did that crazy run, went up, did all these barrel rolls into the line, and that hook actually came out of his mouth, and as it unraveled, it hooked him right in the side. So we're gonna do our best to just net this thing and let it go, because you can't keep these fish when they're snagged. So still exciting, still fun. My first fish of the day. Unfortunately, a little bit of bad luck. We're not gonna be able to keep this one. It's a really nice fit, too. Oh, okay, we're good. Came on, done. I can only imagine what they're oh. doing down there and all that current just rolling around. Ready? That hook could roll out and then just snag him in the side, which is what he said happened. And then you got a fish snagged in the side. You got that river really working against you because you can't turn their head and bring them towards you. What's yeah, you just nailed it. What's the pop fight? I waited all day, everybody, for the best hole of the day. I'm glad I did. I got my rest because I needed it. 
Wild. I'm gonna take my gloves off for these fish because you don't want to touch these things with any kind of cotton or wool glove because they'll take the slime off of these wild fish and you want to release them unharmed so that they can go back to the ocean. That's the beauty of a steelhead, everybody that don't know. These things are repeat spawners. They're not a normal salmon that comes up, spawns, and dies. They'll go back and forth to the ocean sometimes 10 times in their life cycle. So it's important to take care of them because this fish has a lot of life ahead of itself. Look out, lady. Little, come on. Nope. Hi, honey. High fives all around. Thing goes around, we don't have to chase it though. Don't get him, he's way out there. Just go real easy. He'll come up if you just, just bury it all the way down in there. You gotta get him closer to us though. Just keep that tip buried, push him up river, then bring him to me. And then do it fast. Do it fast. Fast, fast, fast. Oh! Get it! Oh! 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 He did it! He did it! He was he was he was just, the net. It was just like he just pull hook or break off. Oh, no. Arms, man. No. <laughs> Check these out. These are my new high sea waders. Brought them all the way up to Oregon and they have been keeping me nice and dry and very warm. Super comfortable, easy to put on. They even got this little knee padding right here. So when you're kneeling down like you're taking pictures with your fish and stuff, you got a little knee padding right there. And High C is actually hooking you guys up with a coupon code. You can save 20% off using my code Landshark. I'm going to have it on the screen here as well as linked below. Brick and I, this trip, coldest we've ever fished. All the guys said bring waders. Super happy we brought these up. Um, you know, because you're constantly getting in and out of the boat. Sometimes we're on the boat, sometimes we're out. We're always exposed to the water. You know, a lot of times you got to get out, you got to chase your fish, or a lot of times you see when we're trying to net those fish, you want to be super careful with them. So waders are a must. And these waders have become my new favorite pair. So Brookie's got some on too. She's got the woman's hunting ones on. Let's take a look at those, babe. Well, I also duck hunt, so I needed some camo ones so I yes. can wear them for two different occasions. Big thank you and huge shout out to High C for sponsoring today's video. Companies like that, that make badass products like this, I don't mind talking about because they make really cool stuff and they keep us warm and they help to keep the channel going. So show them some love. If you guys are in the market for new waders, check them out, linked below. This is how we fish in, in the Northwest. It's nice and hot. It's all for looks. Good morning, guys. Look at this, ice again. So last night we went to sleep and it started snowing again. You guys can't really see it right now in the trees, but driving through certain parts of the mountain, like you look way up there, you still got some snowfall, but it doesn't really stick that much in this area because they have such a temperate climate. It's really humid and it pretty much melts all throughout the day, but. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We've uh, got the snow cleaned out the boats. The field is ready to play. We're gonna get going here, but I think uh, we should start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance at least. Yeah, everybody face the west, face hand over your heart. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States of America, America. to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, addicts, let's get this day going. Woo! First fish of the day. First fish. Honestly, if we can land this, it'll be the first fish of both days. The only ones I hooked yesterday, I lost. <laughs> that was way back there too. Yeah, it was. I'm gonna switch you spot tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's a nice one. Nice buck. How's your drag set on this? I don't know. Man. That's, good. That's good. Jeez, he just said no. What did he say? He said no. Put that rod to the water. I saw Mr. Pop off. Yes. Oh, he's rolling out there hard. See how he just comes oh inside God, though? Dude, what the hell? That was weird. It's because they just, dude, it's because of what happens with that, that current pushes against that bobber and they think you're pulling from behind them. You don't even have to put, like, I don't even put pressure on. I just literally lay my rod in the water and just slow reel. Like, and, and they come right to you like a dog on a leash. I'd rather just yank him. <laughs> More than like, <laughs> just yank him in. That's why he lost all his yesterday. <laughs> nice buck. 
Dogging you, bro. Dogging you. Got it down the hatch, though. So. Oh, God, I can't get him there. Yeah, he swam the wrong way at that one. There we go. <laughs> Maybe. Hold on. Nice job, dude. Merlin, no Finally. I was heartbroken yesterday. I lost that big fish just from the main line breaking, which does not happen ever. Got the skunk off my own my own rod. Well, people don't know this, but I actually put a little nick in Marlin's line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a not a bad way to start the day. No, it isn't. We were kind of wondering because the guy said that this is unusual weather for this time of year. So it's really cold this morning. And yesterday we got most of our bites when it was sunny in between the snow flurries and the hail. So we weren't sure, but bright and early. First deal head in the boat, getting bonked. I love how every single one's got a little bit of a different coloring too. Well, that's what's so cool about steelhead is they just, they're all super unique. Everyone's yeah. unique. It's got different spots and different, you know, it's just got a different look to every fish. And I mean, some of them will have no spots on their back or very few and real blushy red cheeks. And, but that's a, it's a great fish there, dude. Yes, sir. The other guys, they went up a little bit down river of us and they just got themselves a double in the net right there. I can hook it up on mainline and on mine. You don't have a battery? I said perfect candidate perfect candidates for the broodstock program. It's a little late in the season, these guys still need to try to get what they need for these hatchery programs, and these two will be perfect for them. There we go. All right, guys, so like we told you before, you can't keep a wild fish, but is what we're doing is we have this tank right here, and we put the wild fish in there alive, and it's for our hatchery program. So we're gonna take these fish down to a hatchery tank where we will put them in the tank. The hatchery, the fish and game department will come down, pick them up. They'll take them back to another hatchery, spawn those fish, take the eggs out of them, the milk out of them, mix them together, and that's what creates our hatchery fish. Then they take those fish, and they, they're still alive, and they put them back into the river and release them to go back out to the ocean and come back again. So we get live spawned wild fish, extremely good for our fisheries creates a really good biting hatchery fish just a great program it's it's one of kind of one of a kind central to this area and hopefully we can you know use this to to get it on more and more rivers because it is the only program that works i mean it's just amazing When Jordan says it's really big, that's good. Oh, screaming! We don't bury that rod down at all. That's a good one. Marlene, him in my cradle. It might look a little bigger because of so far away and flat, but that was Marlino. So I'm just trying to keep as much tension on this fish as possible. Make sure that hook doesn't pull. I'm tricking him into getting him to swim right towards me. It's amazing. These guys know exactly when you're going to get hit. They've done this a thousand times. They know exactly which hole that trout's going to be in or that steelhead's going to be in. And it works. They're like, your bobber's about to go under. It went under. And look what happened. You reeled and you got one on. <laughs> so this net's a little different. If it's hatchery fish, I'll scoop it. Cam, will you grab that hoop net just in case? Oh, watch it. Wild hand. Nice. Good job, buddy. Good job. So you're contributing to our fishing yes. for years to come now. <laughs> That's Good it. Job. So this fish will get spawned, it'll create hatchery fish, and you contributed to the program. It's a pretty cool awesome. deal, man. That fish is super chromer or silver, as they call it. Because it just got in here from the ocean. Hasn't begun to deteriorate at all. Alright, we just got the double. Cam did a sick job of cradling the second one. Marlon just caught one. I gotta get back in there. Dave just had another hit. It's going off right here. And well, it's snowing. Uh, yeah, it's you can't beat this. I've never caught a fish in the snow. Look at this. 
really like the snow. January, because it doesn't snow, right? It does not snow right here. Two inches of snow shuts Portland down. Yeah, this could be like... What? The worst part! Spit him. Uh, the holding tank that Cameron was telling you guys about earlier, where you get those uh, wild fish, it's right here. We just deposited, I think, five wild fish. Very neat program. Right, you got one on. You got one on. Sometimes your bobber goes down and you don't even know. You gotta have the boys let you know. I wasn't paying attention at all. All oh, these fish is going crazy. <laughs> Oh, just, oh. oh! He swung underneath the boat, probably shook his head and said, wow, sayonara. Dude. No, it's not, it's a bro. For a year. This is another oh, no, downriver hen wild that has already spawned. And you can see that like kind of how they start to deteriorate on their fins and stuff. Um, and down in here, they start to deteriorate. And she's gonna go back out to the ocean. She'll get perfectly chrome bright again and, and get some more eggs in her. Come on back. And... I do the same thing. Hey, you know, sea lions bite them and nothing happens. Why can't little? <laughs> you know, this one is so very non-industrial. You've been very bad. Dude, that was good. That, that was so crazy. crazy. So would you say these are, of any this, fish, are they the most similar to salmon in terms of flavor? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, maybe even like closer to like a coho, you know, or the five species where they're just, yeah, they're just mild. Oh yeah, look at that. Boy, that cut great. Super nice meat. Pretty firm. Looks like they do it different ways. He cuts the fins off first. Oh, I just like to gut mine. Boy, those cut nice. Super nice. I mean, if you didn't tell me what this was, I would have thought it was a salmon based on the color. Yeah. For sure. yeah. So we're gonna make the steelhead tonight. It's about two weeks later, and this is actually a fish that I was really surprised that it held up really well in the freezer. We vacuum sealed all our fish, and um, I always thought that something like a steelhead or salmon didn't hold up well, but I was very wrong. Brooks already made her steelhead, and I'm really excited, because it was honestly one of my favorite fish I ever had. Full, robust flavor, and something we never really get to have. I'm gonna do a little mayo marinade, I guess you would say. So in here I have some kupi mayo, some Japanese mayo, the zest of two limes, and then we're gonna go in with a little gochugaru, and this is, it's like a chili-ish, paprika-like flavor. Um, real earthy. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do some honey. This is kind of bitter, the gochugaru. Gochugaru. And um, so yeah, we're gonna balance it out with some sweetness right here. And then for our salinity, we're gonna go in with a little soy, some savory flavors. And I also wanna add something another aspect of aromatics. So we're gonna go in with some coriander to complement that uh, lime zest. We bust out the mini whisk. Oh yeah, okay. Sweet, savory, aromatic, a lot going on. Like, a lot, really good. Just a good balance of flavors. I think I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of this. I didn't wanna overdo it, because this can be Pretty strong, but I think it could definitely handle a little more. But man, that's good. And tell me that doesn't already look pretty. I already brushed our steel head with a little bit of vegetable oil on both sides just to prevent sticking. And we're just gonna go on with a light layer right on top here of our steel head. This is a very flavorful fish on its own. Something you could certainly do with even just salt and pepper. Man, that's pretty. You already get the contrast of that green and those chili flakes in there. Oh, this is gonna be good.
So take one final look at our steel head before it hits the camp chef. So it's going to go on the pellet grill. If you guys are interested in this grill, you guys see me cook on it all the time. I'm going to be using the side burn a little bit. You guys can find it linked below. Love this thing. So, we'll check on those guys in about 15 minutes. I have the grill set to 350. Um, it's kind of like an oven. It uses indirect heat. You got a circulating fan in there and you got those wood pellets creating all that smoky flavor. So we'll check it in about 15 minutes. It might be done in around 20. And then at the very end, I'm gonna hit it with the torch, give it some color right on top. So we got the wok nice and hot. We're gonna do a little stir fry cabbage and carrot to go along with our fish. And here I got some shallot and garlic, roughly chopped. We're gonna fry that up a little bit. It's gonna season our oil. Okay. Now we're gonna go in with some carrot and cabbage green cabbage. Okay. We're going to hit it with a little soy. So I'm just going to put a lid on and just going to let it kind of steam in there. I turned the heat down a little bit too. So fish is done. Look at those bad boys right there. Oh yeah. Got some gorgeous color on them. Looking ever so juicy. We also got a little cilantro lime rice, tossed in some ranch and vine garlic olive oil. Okay, so we're just gonna torch the top of our steel head a little bit, give it some color. We got our wok fried cabbage and carrot. This stuff is delicious right here. With garlic and shallot. way I could describe it is while I was eating it with all this fancy stuff that Victor did I felt like I was eating a $50 plate at the nicest seafood restaurant on the intercoastal that's that's what it tasted like it's not bad if you're on your second one right there <laughs> <laughs> nice shirt by the way oh yeah <laughs> um I 100% agree with my dad this dish tastes as good as it looks, first of all, it is absolutely delicious, and it does taste like it. It could even be like $100 at the best seafood restaurant that you can go to. Mm -hmm. Everything is just cooked to perfection, and all those flavors go so well together. You killed this one, Vic. You did a really good job on this fish. We, yeah. we really enjoyed it last time, our first time having this fish, and it's a really delicious fish, so <laughs> good job. Well, I don't really have anything to add. Brooke wasn't exaggerating. This fish really is that good. So, this second time having steelhead, that's what it's called, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, steelhead, and it, it ranks super high on my list of seafood. It's just, it's really just really that good. Mm -hmm. Super gourmet. I don't know. It's, everything about it is delicious. I love it. Love the fish. Love the um, the flavors. The rice. Cabbage. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. I haven't seen one of those in a while. <laughs> we need more of those. Honestly, <clears throat> I feel like a broken record. Uh, just every meal after the next, it's just when you think they can't get any better, they're just all super high quality, super high caliber cooking. Um, like everyone said, I hope they can go back to Oregon and get us some more steelheads because it's a really good fish. Just stupendous picture, well done. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, I gotta thank you guys seriously from the bottom of my heart. I'm looking at a whiteboard right here of all these insane places I'm about to travel to. And I just came back from this incredible trip from Oregon, had the time of my life with the love of my life, met some amazing people, all the addicted guys, seriously, thank you so much. Big Dave, Popov, Marlon, Jordan, Sean, everyone was so hospital if I forgot someone. I'm just having a, a 30 year old moment right there. But um, I mean, it's this life is incredible and it's all thanks to you guys. Never would I have imagined that on my whiteboard, I'm gonna be planning trips like Baja, Mexico, and I'm gonna to go to Panama twice this year, and it's all because of you guys and the fact that you watch these videos. So thank you seriously so, so much. Big thank you to Hi-C for sponsoring today's video as well. You guys check out those waiters linked in the description box below. Check out the Addicted Fishing Cruise YouTube channel. They post some amazing stuff. They are the kings when it comes to the Pacific Northwest fishery. So I will catch all you guys in that next one.